Hello, I'm your player too, and today I want to talk a little bit about this guy, the PlayStation TV, or the PSTV for short. Now, if you're not familiar, the PSTV is essentially a stripped down Vita that actually allows you to hook it up to your television and play your Vita games on the big screen. Now, I did a little bit of streaming with this fairly recently to kind of test it out and get an idea of the full range of its capabilities, but then also more recently, I decided to go ahead and give remote play a little bit of a test to kind of see how well it could stream PlayStation 4 from one room of my home to another room hooked up to a TV over both wired and wireless networks. So today I just want to sort of give my thoughts on this unit and what you can expect if you decide to plunk down your hard-earned dollars to grab a PSTV in 2018. Unboxing the unit can see it's way smaller than you'd expect, essentially the size of a deck of playing cards. Port-wise, you've got your power, HDMI out, a slot for Vita memory cards, a slot for physical Vita games, and also a single USB port, which can be used to accept either the PS3 DualShock or 6-axis controllers or the PlayStation 4 DualShock, whichever one you prefer. But that seems like a pretty good place to start, actually. Because the PlayStation TV is essentially a stripped-down Vita all the way down to the interface, navigating it can take a bit of getting used to, even if you're coming from the Vita. Holding circle to peel away an application feels really weird after flicking down on the touchscreen for so long. And with no touchscreen at all, it can be a bit wonky, but once you get the hang of it, I suppose it's no more difficult than any other console interface. But with the absence of a touchscreen, you may want to opt for the PS4 controller, as you can use the touchpad to emulate some of the touchscreen functionality on the PS TV. You can do it with the PlayStation 3 controller as well, it's just sort of odd because you have to click in L3 or R3 to access the rear or front touchpad respectively. As far as how the games actually look and play on the PlayStation TV, the experience is actually pretty good. It's obviously not going to be quite as crispy as if you were looking at the beautiful OLED screen on the first run Vita, but it's still pretty solid for what it is. And the supported resolutions include 480p, 720p, and also 1080i. So if you've amassed a pretty good selection of titles for the PlayStation Vita, be it physical or digital, most of them are likely to work, including standout hits like Persona 4 Golden, Ninja Gaiden Sigma Plus, or Odin Sphere Le Le I, you know, I can never get the name right, I'm not even gonna try, but the point is, a lot of the games will work. But apparently there is a hack or workaround with a whitelist that you can toy with to basically get more games to play on the PlayStation TV. I have not tested this myself, but that'll probably be coming in a future video. Just know for now that right out of the box, a lot of your favorite games are going to work just fine on the PlayStation TV. As far as remote play goes for PS4 games, it works pretty well as long as you have a solid enough connection. If you don't, it can be a little finicky, but thankfully you can modify the resolution and frame rate settings if you have a potato network and still play your games in another part of the house. Something I didn't realize you could do is you can actually have the PlayStation 4 Wi-Fi connect directly to the PlayStation TV Wi-Fi, although results were mixed when I tried it and you're probably going to have a better experience if you just have them both connected to the same Wi-Fi network or even better have them connected through a wired network. After I connected via wired connection, the performance was actually much better. I was able to choose the 720p option instead of the 540 that was on there and actually choose a higher frame rate without any problems whatsoever. And this is actually pretty handy if you have multiple TVs in your house and you want the ability to play PS4 games in different locations without having to lug a PS4 to each different TV or to buy multiple systems to support that kind of play. So should you buy the PlayStation TV? The answer is maybe. If you just have a few Vita games and a PlayStation Vita and you're pretty content to just play those experiences in the short bursts that you already enjoy, then no, you probably don't need to grab a PlayStation TV. If you have a large library of Vita games and you want the ability to translate that experience into the big screen, or if you like the idea of the convenience of taking a slight graphical hit in order to enjoy your PlayStation 4 play on a different TV in your home, then it's a little bit more likely that it's worth a look for you. If you run a gaming channel that's in any way focused on Vita content, the PlayStation TV almost becomes a must buy. In addition to all the great functionality you get just from the perspective of being a gamer, it also gives you a lot of flexibility for streaming and for capturing footage, albeit with an extra HDMI splitter, which I talked about in a previous video, which you can check that, I'll go ahead and put a card up here. But in that scenario, if you do a channel and you do a lot of Vita content, the PlayStation TV is definitely worth a look. Now you can still get these new on Amazon for about 100, 140 bucks, and that's just crazy to me because at one point these things dipped as low as 20 or 30 when I used to see them in Best Buy all the time. So if you're after one right now, you may have better luck finding one cheaper if you go check out eBay. That's where I got mine for about 70, but hey, if you got that Scrooge McDuck money and you want to buy one brand new, by all means, I'll drop an affiliate link below and if you want to use that, that would be greatly appreciated as I help support this channel. But if you have any additional questions about the PlayStation TV, please feel free to drop them in the comments below if I didn't answer anything or if I didn't cover anything well enough, I'm happy to get back to you down there in the comments and also if i don't know the answer i can always just fire the pstv and check on whatever functionality you might be curious about so thank you again so much for watching i really appreciate it if you enjoy this content please consider subscribing to this channel and checking the bell to be notified every time new content like this comes out which production and gear stuff is usually on fridays and i will see you on the next video thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day bye if you're looking for more Vita content, you may want to check out the last video I did where I show you what piece of equipment you actually need to make sure that you can stream through an Elgato capture card with your PlayStation TV or also with the PlayStation 3.
And as always, thanks to all my amazing patrons over here on the right. Thank you so much for helping me chase a dream with this channel. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you on the next one. Later.